Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on Tuesday. I hope all is well and you're enjoying the start to your week. Arsenal sitting pretty at the top of the Premier League, obviously, which is nice to see. Final round of fixtures last night, not that that affected the top of the table, it actually more affected the bottom of the table. As it was Manchester United versus Liverpool, great result for Man United, much needed as well. But Liverpool just two points for an opening, nine games, only a couple of points above the relegation zone. Not that that's going to continue, obviously, but still... Nice to be seven points ahead of Liverpool at this stage of the season, isn't it? Good game last night. I actually enjoyed it. Enjoyed watching it. Thought Man United are very good. And they needed to be after their start to the season. Whether this is a kickstart that they need, we will wait and see. But you don't really want to listen to me talk about Man United, do you? You want to listen to me talk about Arsenal. And um, all is rosy in the house of Arsenal. I wrote a piece yesterday, actually. If you haven't seen it already, it's on my social media. It's sort of looking at the start of the season contrasting it to last season and all the change that's gone on behind the scenes in the last year that's helped Arsenal get to this point um so take a look if you haven't had a look at it already but today just wanted to talk about a few things we'll talk about um transfers obviously Neto um is dominating the headlines when it comes to Arsenal right now uh Wolves talk a little bit about um FFP there's a story doing rounds today about potentially Arsenal in danger of um uh, going over their FFP boundaries, UEFA keeping a watch on them. I'll talk about that as well. We'll talk about Nicolas Pepe, uh, Bamiang Chelsea as well. Um, and uh, yeah, let's talk about Pedro Neto, shall we? First of all, now David Ornstein yesterday wrote a piece in the Athletics saying that Arsenal were looking at uh, Neto as a potential new arrival before the end of the transfer window. Arsenal obviously in the hunt for wingers at the moment, um, potential wingers anyway who could come in on the and improve things on the right hand side. Neto according to David, was one of the players that Arsenal were very much prioritising in that position. And uh, and he's right, Arsenal are interested in it. Pedro Neto had that confirmed since. Not that you'd ever doubt David Ornstein, obviously. Uh, and, um, you know, as always, David, spot on with that information. It's, you know, it's, look, it's not, you're not at anywhere at a stage where you could be excited that it's happening or anything like that. As David said in the story, it's just interest at this stage yeah, from as far as I'm aware. I don't think there's been any contact between the actual two clubs. I mean, we know who's going to be sort of key to all this is George Mendes, who's um, basically, I don't know how you would describe him in terms of his exact role with Wolves. I mean, he basically brings in all the players that Wolves signed. We know that. And he's kind of got that link with them and the owners. Uh, and he's also Pedro Neto's agent. Now, he might well be influential in this if something is to happen, but yeah, you're, way, you're way down looking way into the future in terms of if that will happen now you Arsenal don't have too much time the transfer window is not that the transfer deadline is not that far away but um you know I could never sit here right now and say whether Arsenal are going to sign Neto or not because it, it's lots of stuff has to happen for that it I think personally it's going to be very very difficult when you talk to people at, at Arsenal and look at the potential money involved in the position that Wolves are in it's clearly going to be a very difficult one for them to for Arsenal to get done. A, Wolves are making it pretty clear at the moment they're in no hurry to sell. They don't need to sell. They've just got decent money in for um, Morgan Gibbs-White. Obviously, Neto's only signed a five-year contract basically the other day. You know, it wasn't long ago at all. Not sure exactly when it was, but it was in the fairly recent um, past. And uh, so he's got very long-term contracts. He's a key player for them, obviously. So they don't really need to sell. So the if Arsenal are going to get this deal done, then it's up to them to really make it happen. And to do that, obviously, you're going to have to bid big, big money. But the issue is Arsenal spent big, big money already. so And they haven't really bought any money in yet um, in terms of selling players. So are Arsenal in a position to really try and you know whack down some financial muscle to try and get this deal over the line? You have to say no. So just on the face of it when you put every all the factors together it's a very very difficult deal for Arsenal to get done and that's not me saying it won't happen because who knows we've doubted whether Arsenal can find transfer fees before very recently in the last couple of windows and they've always managed to do it you know they've got the money done they've got a lot of players in and they've spent far more money than any of us could have ever imagined in the last couple of years so you know you would never you could never doubt them in the in the transfer market at the moment because they are they have been putting their money where their mouth is so um we'll have to wait and see but just on the face of it it's a very difficult deal to get done because of the finances involved because of the position of strength that Wolves are in um with the player now we don't know exactly what Neto thinks of it all yet interestingly enough Charlotte um 
Charlotte Ducker, who my old colleague at Goal, she now works for The Times. She, a good time in fact, she's just published an interview that she did with The Times, with Neto, and he talked about the future, interest in, from other clubs. He didn't, it wasn't specifically about Arsenal, obviously, but this is what he had to say when he was talking to Charlotte about interest from other clubs. He says, I always like to hear this sort of stuff, but I'm focused on my job because I'm feeling very good here. Uh, the things you hear makes you work even more. It's good for you and your mentality that know that people know your value. It gives me more hunger to work harder. The dream of any player is to play in the Champions League. I want to help this club go higher and higher because I think we have the potential with the way we work, the way we sign the players and the way that we try to arrive. So you know, basically saying he's happy at Wolves, but Champions League would be a big dream. He, he likes the fact that big clubs are looking at him. Now, I think one of the key things, we don't know exactly how Neto is going to react to this. Um, you know, is he going to, try and sort of engineer a move away and and Mendes is going to be absolutely key. Wolves could say, it can save for all they're worth, you know, that he's not going to be sold. But Mendes has got such a interesting position of power when it comes to Wolves and how influential he is on all the transfer business that they've done, on all the players that they signed. Just look at the recent couple of signings that they brought in. You know, Mendes is so influential to exactly how that club works and how it operates that... Could it be that he could potentially say, look, I do all this for you. All these players come in. I bring all this all this talent into your club. If he wants Mendes to move, oh, sorry, if he wants Neto to move, then maybe it could be a little bit different. He could almost say, look, I do all this for you. Now you're doing this for me. And again, this is all hypothetical for me, me talking, but it's an interesting sort of side note to the whole to the whole thing and um, maybe if Arsenal are going to get something done it could well be that Mendes is going to be absolutely crucial to that and in terms of getting him away from Leeds and we know that um, Edu and Mendes have a very good relationship as well he's already played a big part in bringing Fabio Vieira to Arsenal this summer so it's one definitely to keep an eye on it's going to be interesting to see how it progresses but Arsenal don't have much time and like I said it could well take an awful lot of money to convince Wolves to do any sort of business so it doesn't look like an easy one to get done but that again is not me saying it won't happen we're just gonna have to wait and see how it plays out I mean it's an, it's an interesting one exactly what Arsenal do if they don't say they don't get in the toe it proves absolutely impossible will they do anything else will they go to number two on the target list will they go down to number three on the target list it's going to be interesting because Arsenal's shown we've seen it before that they're not going to panic in this transfer window they've signed a lot of players they've got Fabio Vieira who they believe they can play play on the right hand side we saw him play for the under 21s on the right hand side so and they've got Saka there obviously as well who touch wood doesn't get injured at the moment very rarely he plays most of the games so I don't think Arsenal won and recent history suggests this to panic if they can't get someone that they really really want this window I don't think they're necessarily just going to absolutely panic and they're going to sign Joe Bloggs just for the sake of it to bring in the numbers. We saw that in January when they let Aubameyang go. They didn't bring in a replacement because they didn't think there was someone there that they really wanted, so they waited until the summer. So I don't think they're going to do that in the right winger this 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 summer. If they can't find the player that they really want to come in and support by Guy Sacco over on that right-hand side, I don't think they'll panic and they'll just bring in someone for the sake of it. I think they'll wait. And I think that they probably believe that with Vieira as a potential um, option there, I mean, we, maybe Marquinhos as well, certainly in the Europa League or the, or the League Cup, there's an option there. They might think that they've got enough. So it'll be an interesting one to see how it goes in the, on the transfer market. I mean, Pepe's obviously going to be very, very key as well. Pepe's still here. You know, he's not gone to Nice yet. Like I've said before, the talks are going on. Arsenal are hopeful they can get something done with Nice. Everyone kind of wants it to happen, but it's a very complicated deal to get done because of the finances involved in that. Um and it's no nearer to being done by the sounds of it. Pepe was Arsenal yesterday. He was training. So it's not like he's over in France trying to get this deal done. He's still very much part of Arsenal at the moment. He's still training ahead of the game against Fulham at the weekend. So he plays a big, big part now. Well, he could even he could end up staying. And if he does end up staying, then you've got options on that right-hand side as well. So I don't think Arsenal are going to panic. I don't think it's going to be a case of we've gung-ho to the end of the transfer window if we can't sign Neto we're going to sign anyone else I just don't I can't see that but let me know what you guys think do you think Arsenal desperately need a right winger if they don't sign a right winger by the end of the transfer window is it going to be a disaster would you like Pedro in? would you like uh, Neto to arrive is he going to be is he the sort of player you want to see added to the squad let me know everything that I've spoken about so far in this video let me know in the comments below Okay, so FFP, if you've seen that, I think that the piece was in the Times this morning that Arsenal um, are 
I think the exact wording of it, they're not on a watch list for UEFA, but UEFA are looking at them and they could be put on a watch list in terms of their FFP and their spending in recent years. It's certainly generated a lot of debate so far. This uh, Today, I've seen it, a lot of people are talking about it. Um, I don't think it's anything massively to worry about. Speaking of people at Arsenal about it, they're not, wor- they're not worried about it. They haven't been contacted by UEFA at all about FFP or about their spending. Um, and, you know, Arsenal are absolutely insistent that the club is being run in line with regulations. So they're not worried about it at all. And Swiss Ramble is brilliant at this sort of thing as well. If you don't follow him on Twitter, then you should. He did a um, massive long thread um, on Arsenal's finances earlier on. I think it was yesterday um, or Sunday. And it was brilliant and it covered all this sort of things. And he his conclusion of it all was that Arsenal were going to be just about in line in terms of the Premier League's rules and in terms of UEFA's rules, which different, which are differ. Um, you know, UEFA's current rule, I think they allow 30 million euro losses over a three year period, um, which on the pace that you look, I mean, Arsenal spent 200 million net, I think, on transfers in the last in that period. So you look at it and think, oh, well, they must be in trouble. But it comes with a lot of caveats as well. Obviously, the COVID, um, there's lots of things because of COVID and how much you're allowed to lose because because of COVID. It's all changed and there's a lot of leeway and Arsenal are absolutely insistent that everything's being run in line with regula- regulation and they're not worried about it at all. So I don't think it's anything to be greatly concerned about. And it's not like UEFA actually have hit Arsenal of any sort of charge or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, as far as I'm aware, as far as I'm being told, it's, it's you know, people at Arsenal are very calm about the situation and they're absolutely insistent that all regulations are being met in terms of FFP, both in terms of the Premier League and in terms of UEFA's ruling. Uh, before I go, I just wanted to have a quick chat about Aubameyang's Chelsea. I haven't mentioned it yet on any of these videos I realised the other day and I thought it was quite... It's, it's obviously quite a big story and it seems like it's going to happen. Um, you know, Chelsea apparently in advanced talks now with Barcelona to get Bamiang back to the Premier League just six months after leaving Arsenal. You think left for free? Could well be going to Chelsea for 15 million or so. I, I think it is. I mean, Barcelona, good deal for them. <laughs> Having got him for free six months ago and then suddenly getting 15 million for him. Doesn't sound like Xavi really wants him to go, but because of the financial issues that Barcelona have got in terms of registering players they kind of need to make some sales they need to get players off the wage board and it could well be a Bamiang joining Thomas Tuchel again obviously the pair of them work very well at Dortmund now in terms of an Arsenal point of view I can see what this could happen if he comes back to England and starts scoring goals it's just going to it's just going to raise that whole Bamiang issue again isn't it and the debate about whether Arsenal were right to let him go and all that personally I have no issue with it. I said it at the time I felt like Bamiang had to go the situation with Arteta and Bamiang had just got too um, it was just too divided. It couldn't. He couldn't stay at the club. Uh, I was annoyed that they didn't replace him at the time, but I think in, as a whole that he needed to go. And I think what we've seen in All or Nothing as well just sums it up even more. I think that that relationship had got to such a stage it had to change. He couldn't stick around for the last six months of the season. It was going to do no one any good whatsoever. So I've got no issue with him coming back. I've always loved him when he was at Arsenal. He was brilliant, scored loads of goals, great to watch, played with a smile on his face. We all loved him, didn't we? So I don't think anyone's going to be too disappointed if he comes back and goes to Chelsea obviously it's not going to be nice seeing him play for Chelsea because he kind of consider Orba as an Arsenal player he's even got an Arsenal tattoo on uh, on, his, on his arm I think so it's going to be very weird seeing him in a Chelsea shirt but look, it's football it's a profession and um, he, he'd be going back joining a manager that he gets on very well with it and he's done very good things with in the past so I don't I wouldn't have, hold any ill feeling towards Aubameyang for going and I would hope that no Arsenal fan really does either we saw it with Giroud he went to Chelsea I don't think anyone until the video after the Europa League final um came out um uh that sort of annoyed a, a lot of people when he was on the coach on the way back from that Europa League final but before that when he just went to Chelsea no one really sh- were too bothered about him at Chelsea were they it was just good luck to him didn't happen at Arsenal we needed to get get him time and and he went there and I think it'll be the same with Orba and obviously hopefully he doesn't score against Arsenal hopefully he doesn't end up costing Arsenal with his goals but um yeah it looks like we could well be seeing him back in the Premier League let me know what you think about that Aubameyang Chelsea happy not bothered let me know as always in the comments below All right, that's about it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Everyone appreciate your time as always. Please do have a good rest of your day. Have a good rest of your week. And I'll be back joining you very, very soon as we start looking all steam ahead to that game against Fulham on Saturday.